What if I were to tell you that this and this is a mural? When you think of murals, you think of expansive walls that take up city blocks. But what if I were to tell you that this material can also fill up a whole wall and have colors that are better and brighter than normal? There's so much to get into about this material, including a special surprise that you won't want to miss. So let's get into it. The material that I'm going to be talking about in this video is called polytab, which is also known as mural cloth. This is a multi-use surface that some have compared to canvas and paper, but it's something really different as it's more durable and could be pasted essentially anywhere. But I'll get more into that a little bit later on. For now, we're going to start off by priming this. I'm using a 50-50 mix of gesso and matte medium in order to get that first coat that'll get the paint to really stick on and for the material to be bendable. I'm going to be doing three thin layers of this and sanding in between so that it gets really smooth. I'm now going to throw on a layer of outdoor paint and primer. I just have this left over and I love to just put one base color before I put down any other paint because I don't like it when that white shows through in the final product. I've spoken a little bit about the benefits of Polytab, but here is a comprehensive list of things that I love about it. Firstly, these are very easy to use and install. There's a great level of convenience in that you could have these in your studio and paint them at whatever time that you want and not have to worry about other things like finding a water source on a job site to be able to wash your brushes. Number two is that this is fairly cheap when compared to painting a mural on site because you don't have to pay for lifts, hotel rooms, expensive food when you're on the site, and a bunch of other things. This is also better than paintings that have to be stretched because it doesn't take up as much space and stretcher bars can get expensive. Thirdly, this is for the parents and for clients that, you know, might be moving soon. It's fairly easy to deinstall. These don't warp, at least. I've had one of these in my studio for a very long time and it has not warped at all, but I know that I'm able to deinstall these quickly and easy with just the spatula. I also love these because I'm able to use a brush on these smaller paintings. So instead of using spray paint and, you know, being on site on this massive wall, I'm able to really focus in on the details and paint the brushes on my own time. And I think the product comes out a lot better than if I were to paint it in spray paint on site. But yeah, I'm just going to throw my designs on here. Uh, I'm going to sketch some something funky, something goofy, something not typical to my channel, not a realistic oil painting, um, just to be a little trying to get weird here. So that's the goal. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're enjoying this, you know, subscribe. Uh, but if you're not new to the channel, you might be accustomed to my paintings that look like realism, that are natural landscapes or realistic portraits. But if you didn't know, I also paint these fantastical scenes with funny, goofy creatures. And that's what I'm doing here. Um, this is my sort of art that I do for child spaces like schools and whatnot. Cause you know, life isn't so serious all the time. And this is my sort of own art, right? Um, this isn't the traditional academic rigorous outline sort of design that you're probably used to. So I'm trying something different with this painting project. As you might've seen from some of my older videos, uh, one of my main idols is Slu. And I love that, you know, he's moving into this academic route, um, but I love his old videos where he's painting these fantastical creatures using these wacky techniques. So that's what I'm trying to go for. That's what I'm trying to do. And so now that I have this sketch to put it on the poly tab, you just use the same pencil. You could just use graphite. Um, and then I like to go over it with a Posca pen, a black Posca pen to really bold in those lines. No need for any fixative or any sort of cover. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. I haven't done any sort of color study for this project beforehand. This is all off the rip. I just know that my character Snacks will be purple and I'm thinking the panther, it has hearts, so it's gonna be like a sort of pinkish reddish um, theme. I wanna make those shoes red, but let's just jump into it. This has been super fun so far and I just wanna continue, so.
So I'm going to be using golden fluid acrylics on top of this yellow latex paint. I mentioned in the beginning that the colors on this are bolder and better, and this is the reason why. Golden fluid acrylics are absolutely my favorite. I know that they're a little bit pricier, so not many people are able to use them, but they are the quintessential paint in my opinion. Um, they flow really nicely, and my favorite part is that they're super vibrant. So with regular murals, you know, depending on the material, it's very tough to use these paints, especially if you're painting on stone, brick, stucco, something like that. While if you're painting on this material that you could eventually paste up on the same wall, you can get really vibrant colors and these are UV resistant. So this part of the painting is called blocking in. If, if you know about painting, blocking in process is essentially just trying to match the color as best as possible and just using bold brush strokes to have something on the canvas before you go into the detailed work. So that's just what I'm doing here. Every part of this canvas is gonna have a color and then I'll start doing details after that. And for this background, I wanted to go for a very loose and blotchy finish. Something reminiscent of some paintings that I have done in the past, more abstracted, um, because I know that the characters that I put on it will be very sharp and crispy and be outlined. So, so I wanted that stylistic difference so they are separated from the background and really contrast from it. And if you're curious about my color choice, I tend to play a lot with the warms and cools in my pieces. So having this background be right in the middle, be purple, while having some parts that are a little bit more warm, a little bit more cool. Um, allows me to play with the character colors and be able to shift them ever so slightly because the background is going to help kind of punch those in. Okay, 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 okay. Um, cool. Do I say that a lot? Cool. Yes, this is awesome. But yeah, now that I got all these colors in from these little cups that I've been using, I also have a Stay Wet palette, which if you don't know, it's sort of like a cool palette that keeps your acrylic paints wet, you know, because they dry pretty quickly, but this sort of slows that down. So this is the first time I'll be using it. And I'm excited. So now I'm gonna just work like a printer essentially. If you've seen some of my other videos, working like a printer is a technique that I do. And this palette will help me do that and go little by little left to right. And then I'll finish with, with snacks over there. Um, but yeah, you know, this is the most tedious part, the most time consuming part. So, you know, this will take away a lot of energy, but let's pump up the music a little bit, shall we? Snap. So, um, in the beginning of this video, I promised a special surprise, uh, something to look forward to by the end, and I'm here to announce it. So before I show you all the, you know, the juicy shots of this final painting, um, I wanted to announce and say that I am giving this away. Fortunately, I will not be showing you how I paste this. I'll do that in a future video, but I really want to give this away. I, I think it would be a shame if I were to just put this somewhere in my studio because it's a cool piece that I think could live in some sort of building or house or office and could serve a greater purpose. And one of my favorite content creators is SB Mowing and Lawn, which is kind of a curveball, right? If you don't know him, he just mows lawns, which is kind of weird, right? Uh, I like his content because he does it all for free. He makes money through content creation and is able to give free services to people. 
So that's kind of what I want to do. So I'm looking to give this away to, you know, either a, a family or some sort of large organization, uh, probably specifically with children, working with children, um, to liven up their space. Uh, I'm based in New York, but I could travel anywhere on the East Coast, maybe, maybe not south of New Jersey. Um, but I would love to paste this up somewhere along with all of these other ones that I also created. I'll also give, but yeah, I love art with a purpose, but that's the surprise. So if you know an organization, if you know someone who would be interested in this, um, tell them to reach out, uh, comment down below, and we'll, we'll see what we could do. And if you're interested in seeing where this eventually goes, click that subscribe button to keep up with 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 the channel with me cuz I want to keep I want to continue to do this. You subscribing and liking this also helps me continue to do things like this and continue to make art for art's sake and giving it away um, to liven up spaces and and whatnot. So, yeah, thank you for watching and I appreciate you. And without further ado, here's the final reveal.